and welcome to day 261, making Songbringer. Today I'm going to make some bombable blocks, like the grow back tiles, sort of, but for, for bombs. You came from the soccer match? How was it? What teams? Your, your eternal enemies? Who's that? Alex Peter! Belzio! Ah. Oh, yeah. What? Twitch? How'd you. How'd you get here so fast without a not notification? That's amazing. Where to put these blocks? Where to put these bobble blocks? Let's put it. Let's go to a random place on the whole open world, eh? Totally random. How about four nine four nine zero? Oh uh, yeah. Oh right. All right, nice. Yeah? Bailando. What's Bailando mean? That means dance, right? Or we dance? Or we danced? Something like that? Oh, of course, 490 is not a proper place. How about 470? Dancing. Ah. Oh. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad you crushed your enemies today. Oh, by the way, oh shoot, I gotta show you guys the the gym. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like some overwhelming odds. Fifty thousand to to eight. Or 11, no, 11. There's 11 players on the field in soccer at a time. Is that right? Football. He does have hit points now, and he, um, he basically just recharges. Whenever he gets to zero hit points, he falls over on the ground and dies, sort of, for a moment, but then he just comes back to life. So that, this is going to be kind of cool, because he can have, you know, lots of upgrades for getting more health or whatever. Oh, cool, Boogie. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. You're using Valtry, too. Right on. Yeah, I'm glad. I hope that helps, and I am... I'm also loving Valtteri, especially with this whole data-driven stuff I'm doing with the, the game lately. Valtteri is just essential. It's like, it makes everything so easy to just put data in and get it really fast and, and know that it's also being read fast. Right? Well, Captain Stark, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. How am I so good at pixel art? I just do it. Um, Captain Stark, I gotta be honest with you, when I first started making art, only a couple years ago, I t had just horrible skills at everything I did with making pixel art and everything. It just takes, it's so easy, once you just get used to your graphics tablet, so Captain Stark, you gotta get a graphics tablet, this totally helps, you know, and what the, the most important thing to do is to get used to it, right, you get used to how it how, you know, how, cause like when you put your, with using these things, you get used to like, this is the, it's an absolute positioning. So this is the bottom left of your screen. This is the top left. And so getting used to that and then getting really, really natural with using the pen is, was the thing that helped me the most. And just doing it and doing it and doing it. And also watching videos, watching other people's speed art videos and, uh, and, uh, here's, here's my advice too. 
on how to get how to get good at being an artist. This is kind of from my perspective because I'm a programmer. I've always been a programmer and I wanted to become an artist. So that's kind of my that's how I would advise anyone if they're learning how to do art. Yeah. Oh, and also I tried making so I can make I can make jib um, actually collide with rocks now and it works okay for this boss fight but as soon as I get out he gets stuck on stuff so I'll show you what I mean So that's with him being able to collide with the walls. And then like he can see that? You gotta get he walks around these pillars now. But he does get stuck. Like for example, if I walk north. He gets stuck down there in these those rocks, those trees. He has no idea. I don't even know where he is now. Where'd he go? Jib, come out, come out, Jib. Anyway, so yeah, I don't know what to do about him right now, so I'll, I'll fix that later. So for now, I'm just having him collide only with foes. But yeah, so I'm gonna get, let's get on to the uh, the part of today that's to make bombable tiles. Oh, a pen display. Yeah, these. Some of these look really rad. The Cintiq, right? There was some competition recently about winning one. Yeah, these things look pretty amazing. But for now, you know, a $75 like uh, graphics tablet will do it. You know, there's not, there's, there's probably a huge difference between a Cintiq and a, a bamboo or whatever, but um, I find the bamboo works really well. Quite happy with it. Okay, so let's, um, we need to go somewhere in the world that's easy to put some bombable tiles and we'll just start creating them. So this is where, these are kind of blocks where you can, you drop a bomb and they blow up. But only, that they're the only, they can only be blown up by blocks or bombs. And, oops. So I'm looking for an area with interests, like an interest point, or something. It would be an easy place to just put some bombable tiles. This might do. There's a lot of enemies here. What's up here? I wonder what that is. Okay, so we need a new type, new tile type, and also I'm going to be introducing a new system for this. So uh, constants, we're going to need to add a new tile. I guess we'll call it a bombable. Pillar. I was going to say block, like it could just be rocks, but. Huh. So I'm wondering, I'm, I'm thinking about this, like, the making these bombable blocks, it would be really cool to make them so they fit in with the current, the existing mountains. That's kind of a complex thing. 
It's going to be, yeah, actually I should leave that for later. Let's do the basics here and just kind of call it k tile Bommel or something. What's up, Rocket Bunny? Yeah, like generic, exactly. Lighter Thief, what's up? Oh, I don't know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Pedro. Yeah. Yeah, k tile Bombable. That's all right. Bombable, nah, we'll call it Bombable Pillar for now. Or Block, whatever. Call it Block is fine. <laughs> Why the debate? Very, uh, let's add a function to create one. Bombable block tile? That's, that's not right. Pillar. We're also going to need damage types. Damage types. Yeah, damage types. Let's, let's put this near the collision. Yeah, so the existing, the existing, all entities currently have this system where they can take damage and stuff based on some collision flags, but I think it's going to be better if I use a damage type system. So I can actually explicitly create a damage type. Like this, damage type. And these can be bit masks. Okay, damage, like none, bombs, more intractable? No, actually less intractable. Yeah, I'm making some walls, some walls are going to be bombable. So I, I already have a system to do that. It's a secret component system, it's called secret component. It, whenever you set off a bomb, it looks for anything with a secret component and blows it up. But that's kind of limited. So uh, let's say I wanted to have certain walls bombable with the regular bombs, and certain walls are only bombable with the super bombs, and maybe certain walls are only possible to be destroyed if you have the fire sword or whatever. So that's why I'm adding these damage types so I can create blocks that can be that are that so you can create weapons that are that are not only weapons but they're they're um, traversal items, you know, they they allow you access to more of the world. Oh yeah, we don't need damage none. Damage mask. So yeah, these are going to be bombs like I guess all we need is damage bomb for now, but there'll be more. There'll be a lot more of these eventually. So we got K damage, damage types, K damage bomb, um, and also collision components. These these currently have flags. So, but we want a damage type and a damage mask. Hmm. Uh, you know what? And these shouldn't. This shouldn't be a name type. Because I want I don't want them to easily have none, which would be zero. Yeah, so this should just be unsigned. Damage type, damage mask. That's all we need for those. Okay, I can start compiling in the background and implementing this new damage type thing. Am I familiar with Game Maker? Nope. Sorry, man. 
Oh, hey, what's up, Marza? Um, okay, so what would I recommend to use? Um, this is very personal for you. You know, this is your this is kind of your own quest for for finding what works best for you. If you're already using Game Maker, let me just put it this way: there may be no need whatsoever for you to switch from Game Maker ever. You may find that Game Maker is all you ever need. Okay, so just accept that. Don't don't feel like you have to change and and use some better engine or whatever. Only change if you really need to. You know, like if you want to go and and start learning how to make 3D games, maybe you do want to switch to Unity or whatever. But for now, man, it sounds like from what I understand, um, I haven't used Game Maker, but I'm pretty sure Game Maker is a great thing for beginners. So if I were you, I would stick with Game Maker. That's my two cents. Where you're at right now, Captain Stark. Let me give you some. Let me give you some good links. Um, check out these links. Thank you, Bafu. Um, check out that, Captain Stark. Every day, watch one of these videos. Yeah, start watching these videos, man. They'll really, really help you get in the zone and the right mindset for for when you're beginning to make games. Really, you want there's a lot of things to get right when you're starting to make games, and um, and one of them is scoping your projects very small so you can feel you know you can feel successful with creating something. Yeah, exactly. Boogie puts it really really succinctly. Keep using Game Maker until you grow out of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, we got some. Of course, we got some errors. Oh, K okay, damage bomb is already something. What? What? Redefinition of K damage bomb. We already have that. Previous day. Oh, K damage bomb. Right. Okay. Do you know Uber time? What's Uber time, Mars of Power? Oh yeah, so K damage bomb. This is just all wrong. This shouldn't even be a constant. This should be loaded from profiles anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead. There's only used only used once in the code anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 12, which would be um, K life per container times three times negative three. And get rid of this constant. This should not be here. And now we can we can have that definition just fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uber time is you going back and forth in time? <laughs> Your dad drives for Uber? <laughs> Oh, uh, you guys have Uber too? That's cool. Uber's Uber's awesome. We got that here in San Francisco too. Transporter like the movie? <laughs> I like this. In the next future, in the next future, in the next future. Echo, echo, echo. All right, so to implement this, K damage bomb. First of all, collision components. By default, damage type zero, damage mask zero. However, we can load from an entity's profile, damage type. This is what I love about Valtry right here. 
Data.getChild, damage type. Gets there, parse it. Oh, there's one more thing to hook up in the headers. Constants.h, we need to add some words for parsing damage types. Damage types. Start building. Build away. Build it. Build it all the way. You can do it. Just build it. Uber's banned? Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. I heard that was happening around the world in some places. So, same thing I get in Paris, right? Wasn't that happening in France? But not like Jason Statham. <laughs> it's Mars of Power. Not Jason Statham. Wow. Oh, dude. Italy, too? Yeah. Yeah. I love Uber. It's it's really rad. I mean, we have we have it here and like um it's gr like the drivers are incredible. The the exp they're so quick. They're so much nicer than taking a regular taxi. I don't honestly, I I'm it sucks to imagine a world without Uber. <laughs> yeah, is, is that the case? Well, you know what, though? It's really different for you guys, though. Your taxi drivers and taxi companies are better than ours, like especially here in the West Coast of the United States. We have like some of the most expensive taxi drivers. And... They're so infrequent, a few of them, so it's like, not not super infrequent, but it, it can sometimes take forever to get a taxi drive ride around here, so we kind of needed Uber around here. So damage type bombs, it's going to be one of these, well, this is going to be, you know, Yeah. <laughs> they take longer routes. Yeah, that's what they do that here too in the States. Captain Stark, I stream about two hours every day and it's only been uh Yeah, thanks, Pedro. It's probably only been twenty minutes or so. Yeah, twenty four. Whoa, good guess. Yeah. This happens to us too in the in the at least in the West Coast here. Our drivers will take like a freeway or whatever. And if and if a driver gets on a taxi driver gets on the freeway, it's like an instant five dollars, five dollar addition to the charge. So taxi drivers here always try and get on the freeway, you know, even if it's not like even if it's not the shortest route or whatever, they'll just get on the freeway. Uh yeah, okay, so the next thing. I'm not sure what to call that just yet, so I want to go finish the other two functions first. Really, it's only one function, actually. There's area creation where we will create a bombable tile, which would be kind of like the grow back tile, which is where. Let's see the grow back tile. Go back. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Thanks, Pedro. That's what we got Bob Fu for. He's pretty good at that. Bob Fu. Bombable pillar tile. Uh, 
Can we actually get it going? If it, okay, if anybody's watching the stream, oh no, <laughs> we broke it. Hey, what's up, JFK? Welcome to the stream today. Yeah, all right. So we need a couple of these tiles on the ground. I guess we could just leave it as a grow back tile for now. And then what area? Oh, this is the area with the um Let's go to area patterns. Um there's a pattern where it creates a cliff stairs or whatever. There, K flag stairs, that's it. Yeah, okay, so we got a couple gargoyle tiles here. Let's add some bombo blocks around these gargoyle tiles. Just want to make it really obvious this is not meant to be permanent here. Um, so stairs, W2 minus stairs radius. Let's go, yeah, it's right beneath those. Let's do a K tile, bombo. Pillar. And that should put two grow back tiles there for now. <laughs> Cobra, yeah, nice, dude. It's nice to have some C uh, good energy here. Most of the time, people are just starting flame wars. Like, oh, this is language is the best, or that language is the best. And but it's cool to say somebody like C plus plus. So cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> C sharp. C sharp. Uh, uh, didn't work. Nope, didn't work. What happened? Should be some bombable tiles right here. <laughs> Jib. Oh, you know what? I didn't hook this method up. Duh. Area.cpp. You know what? All of these should be the top of this. So they're easier to hook up. Now the grow back tile. Put it in here, bomble, pillar. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Fire thief. Yeah. Cobra, why am I not using Visual Studio? I just, I do use Visual Studio. Let me prove, prove that to you. I'll show you. Um, I use both. I use Xcode and Visual Studio. So on Windows, I'm using Visual Studio, and then on, on Mac, I'm using, um, you know, of course, Xcode. So here's my Visual Studio project and everything, and I keep that up to date. Never, I'm always going and rebuilding and checking it on Windows as well. Um, but I use, primarily I use um, Xcode and Macs for my primary development, because I'm just, I prefer it. So now we should have that tile. 
Yeah, I am. I am. Why am I doing that? So you know what? I have been dragging them into the the ether, but I, I forget that sometimes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we got those tiles now. Um, now we can go to make them uh, not grow back tiles, but actually bombable blocks. Huh. I'm thinking of, there's multiple ways these, this could be done. Um, cause yeah, cause there's a new whole data system in the world where I could be specifying this entity as like an entity there, or I could be creating a, its own actual specific entity thing like this. Uh, I see why this thing is actually creating its own entity because it also has a behavior. Um, okay, so it might be better to just do its, um, a bombable pillar. Yeah, let's do a bombable pillar here in the overworld section. Yeah, I guess we'll just make it just like a light pillar. Except we'll call this bombable pillar. It'll just have the images format pillar. It'll have render color rock and a collision category static and a shadow offset. Nice. Thanks, Pedro. All right, and uh, yeah, we'll go create a bombable pillar now. So we need to get the data for for this entity. Entities. Bombable pillar. There, that's all we need there. So it's not a grow, grow back tile. This is a create entity, but we're gonna use a different kind of create entity this time. We, we've got data, we've got a position, and we don't care if it's alive. We don't, we're not gonna try and override its image. So we're just gonna do data and position. Um, yeah, we do have names. Yeah, it's probably just better to use Pacific than PST because PST implies that it's uh, st uh, daylight saving or maybe that's DT. I don't know. Anyways, PST and PDT are, you know, the different daylight savings versions. So Pacific kind of is easier. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So is the metric system. The freaking metric system is actually pretty awesome. I have no idea why we haven't gotten everybody to switch. Nobody wants to switch here in the States. We're like, hell no, let's stay with miles. How many mi how many feet are there in a mile? I don't know, 5,180 or something? Nope, don't know, don't care. All I know is a mile is about a mile and I don't wanna to switch to metric, nope. And I'm not gonna eat my Wheaties. And I'm not gonna eat my vegetables either. Dag nubbit. Dag nabbit. You don't really need this. That stuff not needed. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, that's nice. 
Very nice. Command stream. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if this worked. Enemies, bombable pillar. Oh, no. Looks like we have nothing here. Oh, no, there is something here. Yeah, there's definitely a pillar there. It's just didn't, it doesn't have anything. Okay, so what happened? What happened, Bombable Pillar? Why didn't you have an image? Oh, you know what? It might be that it just didn't do the format right. Yeah. Okay, what's going on is there's several ways that an, an entity can create its render. So it's not like I need images. I would want to put image like that. And that's probably going to animate it. Let's see what happens if I do that. It's probably going to animate between all the kind of pillars. Yeah, it's just like, I can't tell what kind of pillar I'm supposed to be. Am I supposed to be that kind of pillar or the other? It's kind of weird. <laughs> I love you, Jim. He's so great. <laughs> Pinball mini game. Done. Done. I didn't have to program anything for that one. Yes. Okay. The, so in a render component, it can it can be really smart about its image. Where does it do that one? Name. No, we don't want a name. Oh, where where does it do that? There's this um it, it gets the image. Here it is. No, that's the ground image. That's the other image. Format format. Wow, what happened here? It's some I know there's somewhere in the code where it's it creates a it does a render component. Maybe it's an area creation. Render name, right? Yeah, oh, here it is. Render dot image. Okay, I'm gonna be. This is where this code's gonna get really smart about images. So uh, we'll get the string. Hmm, actually, we'll just make. We'll create it. We'll copy the string because we want to actually test for a nim first. So render.anim, that will be an animatable type data component. So if a render component had anim like this, it would animate those however many frames it can find for that pillar. And if it had just image, it would mean that it wants to select one of those frames at random 
based on the pillar's whatever position it has. Which this function doesn't know. Damn. Which one does it choose? How would, is, how would this actually get a random number? Because there's, there's basically for every single tile in the game, there's three different random numbers. And you have to know what X and Y to be able to get that exact random number so that everything is deterministic. You can always create the world the same way the second time or whatever. So here we have the position. What's up, Pixotic? Yeah. Two people commented on C++ today. Hey, welcome to the, welcome to the crowd. Welcome to the C++ loving stream. You have friends here. All right. You know what? The best way to do, I think, this for now is to not even specify a random number. So, yeah, I'll just do this without the random number for now. So, this is going to be, so if we don't have an animation. Oh, all right, sorry. Uh, I don't mean, I, uh, this always happens. We always get into flame wars and stuff. I don't mean, I do not mean to start a flame war on what language is the best or whatever. All uh, right, render dot image. Yeah, so if this thing has a percent D of stir dot find percent, it's not equal to string and pause, then we will get a random frame from this animation. Kit random image given a format, which is the current string and the index. Here's where we need a random number, and in fact, let's get the random number for now and just set it to zero. There. So now we can create an entity like that. A lot smarter about how it creates images for components. Yeah, so that should be smarter. Let's see what happens this time. This time, okay, since it's loading its data from here, from image, pillar, percent D, it should, you know, recognize there's no animation and then go in and create, a load the image and find that there's a percent and then load a random image from those. Let's see if it works. Huh, this almost should be oh no i was thinking that this could be actually put into the render component itself instead of in the areas create entity but this is actually kind of important to have here because of the way these whole create entity functions rely on each other all right good so yeah this one um is, and this one are exactly the same Hey, that was cool. The burrowing enemy came up right underneath Jib and hurt him. Okay, so now we just need to get him to be proper random numbers. But in fact, you know what? It's not that important for the... Well, I guess it kind of would be important to give a good random number right there. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. The query function's great, right? IRC script. <laughs> no, it's not me. He's actually getting hit with um with the enemies. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to do this exactly right now. This is I'm gonna, but I'm gonna highlight the fact that this is wrong. It needs to be filled in at least. It's incomplete. And but yeah, so let's get on to the actual, the meat of the topic today, and that's to get these to be bombable. So you set off a bomb, and blow up these tiles. Whoa. No, nah, man, don't feel like you're derailing. Say whatever you want, feel free, man. There's no such thing as derailing this. <laughs> Trust me, these, these chats get way, way more derailed than this. Don't worry about it, man. <clears throat> um... Yeah, okay, so we need to, uh, first of all, we need bombs. Let's make sure the player has bombs. Sign it to a key. <laughs> oh, it hurt Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim, you don't need to get hurt, do you? Yeah, so the next goal is to get these little pillars right here to blow up. Whoa. Thanks, Pixotic. Cheers, man. <laughs> So damage type, damage types. Um, this entity needs a damage type, of course. So let's. Oh, it's already should be parsable in here. So damage type, um, bomb. No, 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 that's damage type. We need damage mask, bomb. Oh, and so damage mask. Oh, we're gonna need more damage type damage types for now. So constants dot h damage bomb damage everything else for now damage all I guess.
So we'll have damage all and damage bomb. Nice. <laughs> awesome, man. So you've been a hobby game developer, huh? Cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yep. A lot of you guys over there. It's late. I think I'm going to start streaming even earlier. Maybe I'll try and push it back another hour. So now damage mask bomb. Oh, you know what? No. Okay. I messed up. Constance.h. This shouldn't be all. This should be like damage type general or default. Default will work. And then damage all. Damage all is going to be like everything. Wow, Pixotic, good for you. It's totally good for you. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you remember the null one? You're dereferencing a null pointer, guys. Did that recompile already? Nope. All right, constants on CPP. All is K damage, yeah, K damage all, but then uh, default is K damage default. There. So now if we now if we have damage bomb, wait, did I oh tell me I did it right. One oh yeah, zero and one. That works. Alright. So here damage mask bomb should work now. Once we get it hooked up. <laughs> Rocket Bunny's a rebel. I believe in AI system, this is kind of a bad way to do this, but there's the, AI, the mood, there's a mood explode, which is for the bomb. The bomb is the only thing that uses this mood. It's kind of a special function which goes and deals damage. So it Looks like, yeah, after a minute, it goes and looks for secret components, and then it looks for foes, and it looks at the player, and it deletes secret entities. And we should also need to damage entities. Damage type. So anything. Yeah, any any entity whatsoever with with the damage mask bomb needs to get hurt by these. So I know this should be an actually a different method, but um, for now I'm just gonna implement it right here in this method. So we need to clear the eids. Get in all collisions, so K filter all with the current position and size and all that, and then loop over all the eids and Check for damage mask. Yep. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. Free time is so precious, right? <laughs> you were kept awake by chocolate milk? Nice. I'd like to be sleeping on the sofa too. I'm tired today. Sleepy day today. Okay, so every one of these entities, let's check for a damage mask. So we'll create a system and And if this thing matches, so collision dot damage mask. Any day now, autocomplete. You got it. Autocomplete. Clock. What's up, Clock? Welcome back, man. How you been? It's going really good, man. Yeah, Jib's like Jib can get hurt now and stuff. He's he's really funny. And he can annoy enemies. And today I'm working on bombable blocks. So these are little blocks you can bomb. And you can only bomb them. There's no there's no other way to damage them except to bomb them. Oh yeah, so if damage mask and K damage bomb, then we'll run the function to hurt this entity. Health system change HP. A lot. Or no. Actually, we just want to blow these up. So we'll remove the entity. Yeah, that'll work. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, Rebel Yell, first and most important thing. We have this little game where we try and stack up as many BC warriors as we can. And most of the time, there's only like two or three. But like, we've gotten the whole screen before. Oh, Barza! I can't believe it. Alex P is gonna ban you. I'm sure of it. He wants to right now. <laughs> and what's really funny about that is Mars of Power is the one that start that kind of started the whole BC Warrior thing. Yeah, time traveling fingers. That's it. Gets you every time. So we want to actually remove the current entity, which is needs to be removed from the area. So world area. Delete entity, I believe. Yeah, delete entity. That should work. I say, I say that once or twice a stream at least. That should work. What's up, KX? Burrito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both amazing languages. A day in the life of wizard foo? All right. Good call, Rocket Bunny. I'll do that. Yeah, right? Oh, hey, whoa, look at that. We have a sudden moment of clarity. Aw, oh, it didn't work. What did happen here? 
This thing should have a collision component. Oh, did I forget to read it? I might have forgotten to even read these. Collision component. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm, sh I'm sure of it. Absolutely certain. Yeah, see, I didn't parse the damage mask. This shouldn't be. This is damage type. This would be words, K, damage types. Same thing with damage mask. Oh, pretty good. Wow. That's nice. We haven't had that one, uh, one that long in a while. <laughs> but Rocket Bunny did like three of them. <laughs> uh, it's just the rules, that's all. Got to have some rules to make the game interesting, you know? You have some a nice gift. And does anybody want to make a bet if it works this time? I'm going to bet yes. Yeah, it worked! Alright, yay! There's no like animation or anything yet. I don't even know if I'll use this kind of tile. But that was pretty cool. We just got rid of those blocks. And they should be totally gone. Yeah, they're totally gone. But if I go off the screen and come back, I believe they will, yeah, they're still there. Right. You know what, we could make them go away though. Wow, true, PC warrior. Forever, and ever, and ever. Let's <laughs> go, dude, sneak it, man. Sneak it. Yeah, so when it creates, um, or when it does this and it deletes an entity. It can also like remove the tile. So I, how would I do that? Area, would, is there a delete tile, remove tile function? Probably not. Set tile, there might be set tile actually. Yeah, there is, set tile. Set tile, which is a private, of course. But let's make it a public. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, I gotta change that. Sorry, man. So the info on the stream says Jan. Yeah. Okay. I gotta. I gotta fix that for sure. <laughs> Such bitter disappointment. Yeah. See for yourself. That's the book I learned from, but it doesn't exist anymore. Wait, what's a Phil Fish? Who, who's Phil Fish again? Which which one was that? But yeah, let me put a note. Let me write a note and put it on my desktop so I remember to update everything. I'm just going to say 2016 because I don't know when. Update uh, stream desk and website to just say 2016 release. I shall do with this. I shall, I shall avenge you. Oh, it's the Fez guy. <laughs> no way, I never want to be like that guy. Never. 
<laughs> yes, if I ever if I ever do a bunch of psychoactive dr psychoactive drugs with Kickstarter funds, I will be certain to stream the whole thing. Yes, I will not. I promise. <laughs> Good question. I mean, it looks good. I even had it on my wish list for a while, but I just didn't want to buy it because of his attitude. <laughs> All right, Marza. Good night, man. Yeah. So Fez was pretty good. Yeah, it looked great. I mean, it really was a great game. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night, Marza. Lime, what's up, Lime? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think we can just put the set tile function to be non-private. Or we could make a special delete tile function. No, better to have set tile. Good night, Peter. <laughs> uh, yes, nice, nice. Uh, oh my god, I got rid of the icons. It worked. Oh, if anybody's wondering, you can actually turn off my mod icons or turn them on. Oh, this is so great. You just turn it. Oh. That's so nice. You're eating fajitas. Sweet. That, that didn't... Wait, did it... What? What? It, what, it, what, it, what it. Okay, so we're going to get the current tile here at this point and then delete it. Oh, yeah. So in X, Y. Area, get tile pause. Man, this is crippling without autocomplete working at normal speeds. I can't, I can't believe how much I relied on that. Position of this entity. Oh, now we need the position, huh? Okay. Do we have this entity? Nope. System and F ID. If F dot collision. And this is uh, F's position, F dot position. There, now we've gotten that. We can go and set the current tile at this position to K tile none. So next time we come on the screen, it will be gone. Oh, wow. Yeah, bubble blocks. I don't know. All of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden the autocomplete is like hella slow. Xcode's been really, really, every time they, it's been upgraded, it's just been worse. But yeah, I probably, you guys are going to tell me to switch to Visual Studio again. I know it. <clears throat> yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, you got it. it ah. I re I rely on it too. Tell me about you know this function. Which what is it? What are all the arguments it takes? Yeah, that's what's nice about Objective C is Objective C has named arguments, so that is really really handy. Does Java have no Java? No Java doesn't have that. C sharp doesn't even doesn't even have that, does it? 
But named arguments are a really, really great way to make your code so readable, more maintainable. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, clock. Oh, you're my hero. If this, let me, let me check that out. All right, so we bomb that block, walk off the screen, walk back on the screen, and it's gone! Yay, it worked. This is with Swift, though. Hopefully... Oh, delete derived data. And caches. Oh man. Oh, I hope this works. Thank you, clock. Oh, I just, I, why did I not think to check if there's a solution? I'm just sitting here with my hands folded in my lap going, oh, it's broken. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I need to, I need to definitely do something about this because this is freaking, it's kind of getting to me. Okay, great. We've got bombable blocks. Another nice thing to do would be to make them so they can actually animate out their their bombing. Yes, it does. Thank you, Stack Overflow. How many years have we had Stack Overflow now? Like five years or whatever, something like that. All five all five of these years have been great years. Oh, check this out too. Check this out. I got all of my code organized into components so look at this okay we got one file that's 2,000 lines oh area is still really big but I did okay before I did all this code organization I had one file that was 6,000 lines so doing a lot better but flux is still pretty big area is still pretty big so I'll work on it I'll get these more more and more uh, componentized <laughs> Wait, where was this? Where was this? Sorry, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got some art already that I'm going to use for that. Yeah, named arguments. Like in, in Objective-C, you have named arguments, and they're really, really great. In Objective-C, you call a function like this. Like, let's say I had auto, or I mean... I don't know. Ugh, what's an entity? NS array. Let's say you had an array and you called something like array set, I don't know, set something. The first argument is actually the name of the, of the method. And so you would pass in, you know, something. And then your next argument, well, all your remaining arguments, this would be arg1, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is uh, some other argument, blah, 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 blah. So your arguments are named. You have It's very clear what it is the data is you're passing into a function of, in Objective-C. Whereas in, in C, you have no idea. Well, you, you have some idea of what this is because I'm using a, a named variable here. But let's say I were to call a function and call it like, set tile and I were to go zero, one, three, or four, or whatever, but you have no clue what the hell this is. So that's what I mean by named arguments. You can actually name, you're actually required in Objective-C to put names of arguments. So you're forced to do this. And that makes all your code more readable. It does make it more verby and verbose and long and stuff like that, but it's, it's actually very good for long-term projects. <clears throat> Oh, C Sharp does have that? Oh, cool. Yay, cool, Rocket Bunny. Blobs of Slime. Nice, man. Yeah, it is more typing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> annoying and nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it is, right? Getting dark. I want 
the boogeyman to come. Boogeyman's gonna get me one of these days. Hmm. Come on. Oh yeah, see this is a beautiful way to do it. It's optional. That's great. C sharp does a lot of things right. Oh check that out. Okay, so you can do you can mix them too. Oh, but you can't put a positional argument following a named argument. But that's you know, if you're gonna use named arguments and yeah. Yeah, if I, I encourage everybody that's writing C sharp code to always use named arguments if possible. But you know, yeah, I guess I see the point. I see there's like you know, it's kind of annoying to have to type that. The, the boogeyman, the boogeyman's gonna get me. Oh right, yeah, it would be a, totally autocomplete. Doesn't do that with C sharp. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Positional args for life, man. West side. Whoa. Ah, oh, hey. I guess we're all learning something today. All right. So the the um. Let's do some. The animations. There's an animation for the guy um that does. The, what's his name? The Cratchu. Cratchu has his animation for falling apart, and he would be that would be a beautiful thing for these pillars. Cratchu die. There it is. Yeah, I haven't started it yet. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't gotten it. But uh, yeah. How about you? Are you uh, have you finished it yet? Yeah, I have a three sixty controller. Yep. Um, I'm gonna say roughly about 50 to 60 percent yeah there's a lot left to do but recently I've done a lot of things to make the engine the actual all the code and everything's getting the code is almost complete basically it really the rest of the game is gonna be mostly content you know adding more dungeons like this new dungeon I haven't even finished yet putting in the game this is a new psychedelic dungeon um, I drew this the other day just haven't finished putting all these entities in the world because I was once I once I drew this I'm like dude I really need a better system for putting new entities in the game and so I developed this whole system around having this world data and um, yeah so now that this system's in place I should be it should be pr fairly quick for me to go and create a new dungeon so that's great and so basically yeah the remaining 40 percent or so of the game it's gonna be mostly content, I'm thinking. Blood? From where? Wait, wait, what was that? Oh no, that was uh That's uh that's the Cratchu. He's a he's a crab. Yeah, so that's the crab's legs. So let's save this as pillar destroy or something. Bombable pillar. Pillar destroy, whatever. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> this <laughs> it isn't, it's a cratchu. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know what you mean, Pixotic. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I'm the same way. I, it's so easy to get caught up in those phases of the game where you're all you're doing is code, and then you don't see as much visual progress. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess there just has to be kind of a blend and a balance of that. You need to make visual progress and you need to make engine progress, which is probably why I've I've just barely gotten to the point where I did this. In fact, I wish I would have done this at the very beginning of the game, but. Um, but you know, I had to do some visual progress too, I guess. So it's good now to have this, but it, it was also good to have a, a quickly working system during the first 50% of the game. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to crack out my, my pen and we'll draw, just remove the bottom, the, remove the crab basically from this drawing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I totally agree with this. To get something running as fast as possible without making the engine perfect at first, yeah. Yeah, totally. That's I love that that video you sent was really awesome. So for anyone that just joined the stream, I'm making bombable blocks today. These are blocks that you can set off a bomb and the only thing that destroys them is the bomb. So um, I've introduced damage types today, special damage types. So some things can be only ever damaged by a certain thing, which is gonna make weapons able to be traversal items. Very versatile. Yeah, cool video. I think if you're sharing the one I was thinking of. Mm hmm Yeah, Pixotic, have you used Unity yet? You're already familiar with C Sharp and everything. I bet Unity would be a cool engine to play with. What? What are you using right now, by the way, to do your hobby game dev? Yeah, Rocket Bunny, totally. Don't don't ever doubt Game Maker. It's still great. Yeah. Yeah, Unity's great. Great engine. It's what's so great about Unity is that everything is already an entity component system. It's beautiful. Beautiful design Oh, by the way, is does my cursor still draw off from where you guys see it? Like it the cursor used to um you know, it would draw like I it always appears like a pixel or so beneath where I'm drawing. Is that still the case? Because I upgraded to Game Show 1.1 and it might be better now. It'd be nice if they, they fixed that. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. All right, damn. Oh man, dude, you made your first big project multiplayer? Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. That is some tough shit. Seriously. Yeah, my my last video game was real-time multiplayer. It was a MOBA. And it was hella hard. 
six whole months just on networking, man. No, no creative tasks whatsoever except for debugging. It was, it was hellish, dude. I was like, man, making single player games is easy compared to making multiplayer. I'm going back to making single player games, maybe local multiplayer. Definitely not this real time multiplayer business. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I don't even know what it's like to write it with multi with Unity. Hmm. Evermore. Hmm. That's an issue. Yeah. What's up, Mike? Welcome to the stream today. All right. Now we've got a separate pillar destroying animation. Render that. Put it in common. All right. Let's make this thing get destroyed now. Really? Wow. Oh, that's cool. So it's, is that only, it's only for its 2D thing or 2D mode, right? Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what Nintendo's next system is going to be. I th I'm pretty sure they're about to announce it, right? Cool. Procedural, all the way. I love procedural game. I love a game that can surprise me every time I play it. That's oh, so cool. Okay. Mm this thing blows up. Damn, this thing kind of needs to be its own entity now. Okay, I was just thinking in my mind, like, where, okay, there's a bunch of different play. There's an entity, for example, the Grow Back Tile. This thing has three different sections, or four different sections, mainly of its, of its data. There's its attributes and components that it creates. There's animations, there's sounds, and then there's its behavior, its AI. And, um,. The, the sucky thing about this is that animations are different from attributes. So like if, if, for example, its animations were underneath render, that would make a little more sense. You know, like if it had animations, idle, you could specify all these things and then, you know, that would be pretty cool. 
because what that would do is it would make it so I could put an entity inside the world and I could easily load animations there too. But for now, I'm gonna code this the, the wrong way. The, I'm just gonna code this some way that works basically for now. And that's to make it so these things run an animation as they die. Oh man, do I really wanna do that? Uh. Yeah, okay, so I guess it, you wouldn't delete the entity. You would just remove entity, remove component. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally right. Really? Wow. Now that's kind of interesting. Nintendo phone. <laughs> right, right. Right, yeah, yeah, good point. Remove component, yeah. So we can remove its collision po component. Uh, and then just animate it on its render component, the animation that we wanna do. So yeah, and this is one way to do it. NM equals kit. And then yes, this is so wrong. I shouldn't be doing this this way. But anyways, pillar destroy percent D. I'm just gonna get this working some way, and then I'll clear it up and make it better tonight. So and then and then uh f dot render dot sprite dot run action animate create and m and remove this collision component. Okay, well let's let's hope this works. Oh yeah, Persona 5, huh? All right, Pixotic Seaman, good night, good night. Persona 5, huh? What's this one? Ooh, it's an RPG, sweet. It's coming first to PlayStation 4. It's already got its own Wikipedia page. This must be a, a big game, huh? Which one do I click? I don't know where to go to look at, to look at this game. Screenshots, I wanna see screenshots. Screenshots. So all we got is concept art at this point, huh? I mean, it looks like rad per concept art. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, wait, here we go. Okay, there's the screenshot. Is it kind of like, kind of like Metal Gear, sort of? Like you're, it's like a sneaky game. Yeah, wow, these look like some amazing shots here. Cool, Persona 5, huh? 
Yeah, it's always it's all man. I love keeping my eye out for cool games. That's for sure. Cool. I'll watch this later on. Add to my list. Rami. Oh, who is it? Who re who recommended the Rami Ismail talk from yesterday? I haven't watched it yet, but I I want to say thanks. That one, that one looks really good. Atlas Games. No, what's? No, I haven't. Oh, okay, so this is Atlas. Okay, so they have Odin Sphere as well. Pretty. Sweet, so you get to play a sexy girl the whole time, huh? I love sexy girls. Also looks very, very beautiful art. Cool. Awesome, I'm gonna keep my eye out for, for Persona 5. I gotta get a PlayStation. I need to get a PlayStation 4. Or get them to send me a dev kit or something. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, so the one downside of the way I did it just now is that if I walk off the screen and come back, it's gonna be there's no longer there. But that's okay, I guess. Oh, what happened to this guy? <laughs> Why is he jiggering? Jiggling back and forth like that. Oh, look at that. It's the dead enemies. All the enemies that are dead are, j uh, are jiggling back and forth like this. Okay. Gotta fix that. Well, it works. There you go. We got some bombable blocks, and yeah. Ah. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. PS2 was so so long ago, huh? Um. Yeah. So I know it, I haven't been streaming for that long, but. I'm pretty much done. I gotta get, it's Saturday here, and I'm gonna get going early today. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. I'll just kind of recap real quick. Um, basically, my goal for today was to get, to add bombable blocks. And the game already has a different type of bombable block, where it's a secret block. And it's a different kind of system, but I think this is a more organized type system to use damage types. So the game can uh, have you know, some tiles can only be, or some blocks can only be destroyed by a certain weapon or whatever. So that's going to be pretty handy for making the game, like, you know, uh, making things in the game more accessible or less accessible. Like, you'll be able to access certain areas if you have the bombs only, you know, or the, or the super bomb. You can only get to certain areas if you have the super bomb or whatever. So, yeah, that's that was the goal for today, and we got it going, so... Yeah, so see you guys. I'll be back tomorrow. I think I'll be back. I might stream tomorrow. I don't know. It's Sunday. Might take a day off. Might not. But, um, yeah, so see ya. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy yourselves.